Rachel said, my name is Yair. In Hebrew, Yair is, uh, will make light. So I hope that I will make light as much as the rainbow gave uh, our uh, light into her lecture. Uh, so it was a very interesting lecture. Thank you. Uh, my name is, as I said, my name is Yair, and I'm from Asafa Rofe Medical Center. Asafa Rofe is a, a hospital in the 20 minutes from Tel Aviv. And uh, by mistake, I can say, uh, by fate, uh, Rachel and uh, I uh, met in the uh, Sagol Center, and uh, she uh, brought us the idea to, to a research uh, about uh, uh, the use of the hyperbaric uh, for patients suffering from fibromyalgia. And I will speak a little bit about fibromyalgia, although I know that Shai talked about it uh, in his lecture. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, fibromyalgia due to a mental um, stress as a result of uh, sexual child abuse. Hello? Okay, so this is a Safar of a Medical Center. This is our hyperbaric institute. Actually, it's the largest institute all over the world. Uh, we have uh, two chambers. Each one can uh, treat uh, 20 patients in the same time. So we can, if we want, we can have 40 patients in the same time. Logistic, it's a little bit problem. So we have them in every session, every 12 patients every time or 12 or eight in each uh, one of the chambers. And we are working from seven o'clock in the morning till uh, nine o'clock in the evening. Uh, it looks like this inside. The patient are sitting on the chairs and each one has his own mask that he can heal. 100% uh, oxygen through the uh, uh, mask. All the time there is a tender inside of the chamber. There is uh, a nurse or some uh, kind of a therapy that is uh, sitting with the patient all the two hours inside of the chamber for the whole period of the uh, session. There is a control panel that outside, that the technic guy is sitting outside. He can talk inside and it's like the big brother, something like this. He can speak inside and to say if someone needs something and we can hear everything that inside at the outside. So we have all the time some connection with the patient and with the tender that is sitting inside of the chamber. Uh, I will not talk about physics and something like this, but I will just explain a little bit about why, why we need pressure and oxygen. What is the connection between the pressure and the oxygen? What we are doing, we are increasing the atmosphere inside of the chamber to two absolute atmosphere. It's like scuba diving to 10 meters. When we are going down in the water or up with the pressure, we are increasing the uh, uh, stability of the uh, gas that we are inhaling. We can put much more oxygen inside of the tissue, 20, 30 times more than we can have it in our uh, uh, air uh, atmosphere. So by that we can uh, get a lot of oxygen to uh, defect uh, tissues all over our body. So if we have ulcer, we have some non-healing wound, so we, will in, we can inhale the wounds much more faster. But what we are doing today, we are focusing on brain, and I will uh, bring the uh, wound uh, of the leg to the brain and to show what we are doing inside of the brain while we are doing hyperbaric uh, oxygen. <coughs> Fibromyalgia uh, actually was found on the 19th century. I know that Chai has already spoke about it and I stole this picture from his lecture, so uh, he knows about it, don't worry, it's not stealing. Um, and uh, it, uh, it was, uh, it's now one of the most common uh, syndrome for pain, for muscle skeletal pains or uh, inconvenient in the body. Uh, so uh, most of the patients are from age 20 to 55, and it's around two to 3% of the population in the United States. And it's all the time increasing because we understand today pain much more than we understood it uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, there was a, supposed to be another, uh, never mind, okay, another slide. 
but uh, the, uh, it affects all over the uh, uh, system. It can affect the brain, it can, it, like headache or pain in the eye or in the skin or we will have stomach or we have uh, stomach pain or we will have a problem with our urinary or something like this. So it affects all our uh, 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 systems that we have in our body and the uh, life, uh, quality life, quality of life of the patients are getting very, very poorly and they are starting to do less and less things uh, all over the day. So, uh, as we know today, fibromyalgia is uh, considered to represent uh, a prototype of a central sensitization. It's a condition that uh, known by uh, the increase of the transmission and the processing of pain within the nervous system. Uh, in addition, uh, there is a, it can be uh, triggered by many things, but we are focusing on three uh, triggers that we are known today that are much more uh, uh, common. Uh, the first one is the traumatic brain injury. Patient due traumatic brain injury, uh, we see that they, have, uh, they are uh, developing uh, fibromyalgia. Um, the other thing, the second one is an infection like EBV or CMV or, uh, uh, okay, we'll stop in this. And the third one is a mental stress as a result of or a complex uh, experience, a traumatic experience, sorry. We had one ser uh, research about fibromyalgia uh, three, four years ago, uh, and we saw that uh, uh, in our first study that fibromyalgia in female, that, uh, in the female patient with hyperbank oxygen, we found that hyperbaric can improve the symptoms and the life quality of fibromyalgia patient. It also found that hyperbaric oxygen can induce neuroplasticity and reduce abnormal brain activity in the area of pain related, related, but we did not classify the patient what was the trigger for the uh, fibromyalgia. The aim of my research was to evaluate the effect of uh, hyperbaric oxygen on a very subgroup uh, of women that uh, suffered from that suffering from fibromyalgia as a result of a severe stress, uh, like a prolonged sexual child abuse. Uh, the uniqueness of this uh, uh, group is the trauma has been ended in the past and they, co they continue to uh, have still uh, more uh, treatments like uh, uh, psychotherapy treatments and so on, but uh, they didn't have any relief. They are still well experience uh, pain in their adulthood and they had some difficulties with the society or with themselves. But even though we know that the uh, uh, child abuse as a, a traumatic event has been stopped from in the, uh, in the past, okay, sorry. For the inclusion uh, criteria, uh, we took women uh, over 18 that was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and they had a history of uh, sexual child abuse. And uh, uh, we, we, were, we were needed patients that were, had uh, a failure with the psychotherapy uh, that they have uh, treatments uh, before, so they had no relief, so they had still some problem, and then we believe that the fibromyalgia was due to the failure of the uh, psychologist uh, therapy that they had in the past. We excluded the women that are in pregnancy because of the hyperbaric influence, we don't know exactly what it does it do, and if they had any lung problem, so we don't get patients with any uh, lung problem into the chamber, or if they have some problem with the middle ear, also it's a uh, exclusion. And we excluded women that we believe that they will have a difficulty to cope with the uh, processing of the uh, treatment, and therefore we conduct a, a, a uh, a prior uh, interview with all the patient, and this is Rachel and Shir, and another amazing staff that were volunteered to do it before uh, we are starting. Actually, it was my uh, biggest uh, uh, fear. Uh, what will happen in the chamber? 
what if they will freak out what I will do because I'm a, just a nurse, I don't have any experience, I'm not a psychologist. My mom is a psychologist, but uh, I just got any analysis on myself, not on other people. So <laughs> I really didn't know what I'm going to have in this uh, uh, journey. It's a journey. I can say today it's a journey. And uh, Rachel and Shir told me, don't worry, we will pick it. We will pick them for you. We will know who can be able to handle it. They have something around 75% of success on this, but uh, some of them uh, were very difficult. But even though that they were very difficult, we learned a lot of those cases uh, uh, about the process that the, the patient have with the, fab with the uh, treatments. Method. So what we used, we used the first thing that it, uh, for us was very important. It's uh, imaging, brain imaging. We use two kind of brain imaging. The first one is the SPECT scan, and I will speak today only about the SPECT scan because we don't have uh, the analysis of the MRI. What we did in the MRI, we did MRI perfusion. It's not a regular MRI. We, uh, had, uh, we have a new protocol that we can measure the flow inside of the small vessels in the brain, and we can show new connection in the brain uh, before and after hyperbaric oxygen. That is, this is what we are doing today. We don't have yet the analysis, the analysis of the MRI, but we have some cases that we saw uh, uh, changes in the blood flow inside of the brain in those, uh, in those patients, and we will have the results when we will publish the uh, article, I believe, two years. <laughs> Half year. Three months. Ne next week. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, we used an, uh, also symptoms of uh, uh, questionnaire symptoms uh, uh, for the, to evaluate the fibromyalgia, how the fibromyalgia has been changed due to the treatments and quality of life questionnaires to evaluate what it did, what the treatment uh, did to the patient in all of the aspects of uh, how they deal today with the, uh, uh, how do they experience the trauma and the uh, quality of life. All the patients had 60 sessions. It's every day, five days a week. Every treatment is for two hours inside of the chamber. And uh, inside of the chamber they can read they can uh, listen to music. We have a special system of uh, music that they can uh, uh, hear music inside. And uh, some of them were uh, writing diary or uh, 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 doing during of uh, pictures inside of the chambers. It was amazing what happened inside of the chamber for those patients. Uh, they are sitting with a lot of other patients and uh, you, you can, you, we will able to see that how they get changes in, from one week to another. In the beginning, they were not talking about at all about why they are in the chamber. After two, three uh, weeks, they were starting to say that they have fibromyalgia. And I think more than 70% of the patient in the last two weeks, when someone asked them why they are inside of the hyperbaric chamber, they said, we're in a research about fibromyalgia due to sexual child abuse. And it was amazing to see it, how they opened for other patients. Of course, of course, for the uh, other, uh, we didn't tell told anyone why they are inside of the chamber. I think most of our uh, physicians inside of the uh, institute didn't knew exactly why they are inside. They just knew that they have fibromyalgia. and. In the end, we saw more and more patients that were talking about their child abuse and the changes that they have due to the hyperbaric oxygen. Okay, the, we had, uh, we uh, have uh, 40 patients that signed for informed consent. Uh, they've de they uh, uh, developed into two groups, cross group and treatment group. The uh, uh, treatment group were proceed all the, uh, uh, test and after that they get inside to the chamber immediately for uh, three months and in the end we evaluate them again and the cross group had a two-time evaluation without hyperbaric oxygen in three uh, months uh, period of uh, waiting and after the three months they had uh, the uh, three months uh, treatment and they performed the 
the uh, evaluation at the end, at the third time evaluation. So the, we have between group and in group uh, 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 crossover. Or we can, so the change between group and in the group changes. All the patients uh, were many years after the uh, child abuse uh, experience. Uh, they were very educated, and this is something that uh, we were a little bit surprised that we, by maybe the screening that Rachel and Shir uh, did in the beginning, uh, where they can uh, uh, find how the, I don't know, this, this is what good, it was good for us that they were educated because we could have much more data, I think. Uh, they were employed, most of them, and this is what, okay. For the evaluation for fibromyalgia, we, we use the tender points evaluation. This is, to evaluate pain, it's difficult. Let's start with, okay? Well, it's very uh, important to understand that it's very uh, uh, difficult to evaluate uh, pain because the only one that feels pain is the patient himself. We cannot say, she doesn't look that she has no pain. I cannot say something like this. So uh, most of the questionnaire uh, were uh, subjective, but this is what we have. So the patient need to say how, where do they feel now pain? Now there is 18 uh, tender points that very common in fibromyalgia. This is how uh, uh, the rheumatolog uh, has been found that the special 18 points. And they need to say where, in which uh, of the tender points you feel pain. So we can see that the uh, control group did not change at all, and, and the uh, treatment group has been significantly uh, improved in the self-report of the tender points. The second uh, questionnaire, we assist it with the severity, the SSS score, it's a severe, it's the symptom severity score questionnaire. In this questionnaire, the subject will ask to assist how the disease has generally affected them in the last past week. Uh, and we can see also that uh, the uh, control group did not improve at all, and the treatment group has been significantly improved. The third one, the third uh, questionnaire is FIC. And in FIC questionnaire, the, it's uh, evaluating how much the fibromyalgia disease uh, limit basic activity in, during the day, uh, there is a question like uh, how were your ability to do shopping, uh, cleaning the house, climbing stairs, going to work, etc. And you can see also that they uh, uh, reported for uh, a huge uh, difference in the treatment group. So to evaluate the impact about the quality of time, how much time I have? Hmm, okay. So we use the SF36 questionnaires. Uh, this questionnaire uh, examines various aspects of quality of life, like <laughs> physical function, limitation, uh, pain domain, energy, emotion limitation, and social functions. Now, it, it's separate for each test by himself, but I brought here only the, the uh, total uh, uh, score. But there was significant in each kind of the, uh, uh, each, each one of the tests inside. And we can see also that the baseline, uh, the treatment group has been improved significantly uh, to the control group. In patients with severe trauma, there is a very strong mental uh, component which affect the daily function of the victims. So for that, for we use the BSI. Uh, the brief symptoms uh, uh, questionnaire. Uh, this questionnaire also uh, is uh, uh, developed into three dimensions for depression. You can see that there was a huge change in the treatment group, anxiety, okay, and also uh, somatizations. Now, in a minute, and I will go to the brain spec, and I will see. I will show you what we have there, but it's very connected for the area that controlled those area inside of the brain, and it was for us a surprise. I will speak about it in a few seconds. Uh, as you all know, uh, the um, uh, victims has uh, a lot of uh, 
post-trauma experience due to the uh, child abuse. Child abuse. So we use the PTSD uh, syndrome, uh, symptom skulls questionnaire. Uh, and what we saw in this, this questionnaire that they were less avoiding to do activity during the day. There were less overreaction, less nightmares, and less uncontrollable memories of the uh, um, traumatic event. There was also uh, a significant uh, changes for the all kind of the inside uh, test that for the post-trauma uh, questionnaire. Okay. So now I will go a little bit to the brain. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we did a research about fibromyalgia uh, five, four, five, four years ago. We published it in 2015. And there we did not classify what was the cause for the fibromyalgia. We just had a rheumatologue that uh, women came with fibromyalgia and they said it's okay for the they, are, they have fibromyalgia, they go, can go into the research or they don't have. And uh, we didn't ask what was the trigger for the fibromyalgia. We didn't ask it in this questionnaire because we didn't understand it yet in this uh, time. And today, uh, when we understand that we can uh, look for the special trigger for the fibromyalgia, we decided to see what is the difference between those two groups. And what we found is something that was amazing for us, that we have a different population. It's a different population. It's not a fibromyalgia classic. It's a very unique population that we can see in the brain. Other area that we had in the research that we have in 2015. Area that we have as a key player in this research were not involved at all in our uh, brain imaging in uh, 2015. I will speak only about a few of them, but I will start about uh, Broadman 30, 23 left. Uh, um, in people with depression, uh, there is an increase in uh, the metabolic activity in this uh, area. In our uh, analysis, we have found that by hyperbaric oxygen exposure, we can reduce metabolic activity in this area and the, the reduce, uh, can reduce also sign of depression and anxiety. Okay, so it's also connected to our questionnaire that we saw before. Another area with uh, hyper uh, activities in the baseline is 25 right. This area is uh, connected to the limbic system uh, that involved the reaction of emotion like sadness and general uh, mood swings. In our analysis also, we saw that hyperbaric can uh, change the metabolic activity in this area, and by that to reduce, uh, again, a sign of depression and anxiety for those patients. Uh, the other area that we will uh, focus is uh, Broadman 8, that we saw high hippo metabolism in the beginning. There was no perfusion in this area uh, before the uh, treatments. Uh, child sexual abuse is a unique trauma and affects the brain in life uh, span. The child abuse survivor hunted by intrusive thoughts and negative emotion even the, in the adulthood. Despite the trauma happened years before, there is no relief uh, in the present uh, and there is no hope for a better future. Uh, therefore, when in adulthood, she has experienced the reality as an unreal and a, a fake world. The world is a dangerous, dangerous place. What happened will always happen again. Uh, as one of our survivors said, time stands still. Sorry. Uh, yes? Again? I will say now. I don't remember everything in English. I don't remember how to say it. So I wrote notes in the <laughs> computer. No. What? Okay. So I will, but I don't see. Uh, so I wrote notes, okay? So I will speak with this one. Okay? Okay, sorry. 
the hyperbaric oxygen and the changes in Broadman 8 enabled the survivor to bear uncertainty in life and to feel more safe. Um, however, the changes in Broadman 8 changed the perception. It changed the perception about the future, uh, that what it changed the perception, the future might not be filled with horror, but perhaps with hope, and joy, and positive uh, future uh, experience. It changed the perception about the life. They are like, they can look about the life from other angle, okay? One, I have some quote of the patient. The past has started to be past. I have now present and I have now future. They can go like this and to look from the side what is the change that they have now. But, okay? Yeah? You were asking what that part of the brain yeah. controls. That part of the brain deals with decision making, interpretation, memories, because it goes down into your temporal lobe too. So it controls those kinds of things. Overall, more executive functioning, thinking, things like that. So it's metacognition. Yes, also? and interpretation of experiences, and it also ties into memory. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. This is a great, out of, outstanding uh, result that has nothing, not, doesn't have to do with our own research. That finding that this area is also in charge of uh, life perception, as a uh, time perception. Time. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, it, it also deals with how uh, you perceive and deal with stress. Uh, so if, for those of you who are here on whenever day it was, Sunday, when I did the sort of neurobiology of trauma, uh, you may have seen the prefrontal cortex and then you also see the frontal temporal. The first one is mm -hmm. the prefrontal cortex, exactly. and now he's moving to a different area. Okay. Again, thank you. 20, 20 slides and we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other area is Broadman 37 left, also with hypoperfusion. The increase of the metabolism after hyperbaric oxygen in this area uh, decreased the this association mechanism and uh, those allowance the survivor become aware and less disconnected from the body. The split between <coughs> the body and the mind, not feeling the body and feeling a numbness correlated with somatic emotions and cognitive uh, disassociation among child sexual abuse. In, it is in order to block one's body uh, sensation and emotion and not re-experience the pain of the injury. The increase in this area after uh, HBOT allows the survivor to tell their traumatic story in a clear way by the decrease of the disassociation mechanism. And another quote, it was never aware, I was never aware that there is other colors besides black and white. I could not feel my body. Now I can see even the colors of my eyes and it was the first time that I met myself. Now, this is an area that was enigma for me in the beginning. And Rachel forced me to understand what will uh, uh, actually combine the uh, self-drawing and the hyperbaric and what we are doing. She was painting it inside of the chamber, actually, okay, this lady. And we can see that in the beginning, uh, all the experience about the hyperbike in the beginning, the 20, the first uh, session was about pain and suffering. What she experienced, her body, and the feeling about uh, what she experienced, the, the illness of the fibromyalgia. Now, in the session 20 to 40, there is ups and downs all the time. Sometimes they are collapsed in this area. They are starting to see and to feel and to smell things that they didn't remember from the uh, uh, event that they have in the child abuse. They are, I don't know if Shai spoke about it, the repressed memories? Yeah, yeah. okay, he did. So this is, was crazy for us, that someone started to feel uh, um, 
sickness inside of the chamber. And uh, I asked her by, by chance, I didn't know what I was asking. I asked her, what kind of a smell do you smell? Because there is no smell of oxygen. Oxygen does not have any smell. She so said, I smell something from the past, something from, from the area that I was in when I was a child when the event happened. And uh, I, I asked her, I was terrified, but uh, after I was uh, uh, relaxed, I told her, okay, so when now you know that this is the smell and you know that it's not real, that you are in a safe place now, what do you think about what you have now? So they say, okay, I understand now that this is what I'm feeling, but I need to deal with it again, but now I have much more uh, resource to do it uh, in, a, in a good way that I can be able to uh, deal with it in my life. And okay, so this is in the middle between 20 to 30, 40 sessions, and in the, in the end, they are feeling good. They are actually feeling joy and good. Okay, so uh, for conclusion, uh, hyperbaric can improve quality of life. It can decrease anxiety and depression. We can see changes in the brain for uh, those kind of uh, population. Again, we don't have a lot. We have only 30 patients now, but we will, I believe that we will continue when we will have a little bit more budget. And uh, brain imaging um, suggests that uh, uh, child abuse victims who suffered from fibromyalgia show different uh, perfusion pattern than fibromyalgia, regular fibromyalgia. Thank you for all. Okay, thank you. Um.